On the morning of Saturday, the 28th of March, 1987, 66-year-old Helen Fleet got her dogs ready and got in her blue Datsun to take her dogs for a walk in the Wilberry Woods in Weston Supermare. She parked her car close to the Wilberry Woods on Wilberry Hill Road and it was here she was last seen alive at 10.50 a.m. Helen Fleet was just walking her dogs on a regular day when she was stabbed ten times, battered around the head and strangled to death. At around 12.20 p.m. screams were heard and shot out through the neighborhood. Her body was eventually discovered motionless 20 minutes later at 12.40 p.m. by another dog walker. The police started a major investigation, and 120 officers were assigned to her case. They took over 500 statements. They were told about a young man seen running quickly along Ashbury Drive around the time of the murder. Detectives thought he may have been the same person who was seen rushing down nearby Farm Road towards Milton Road carrying a yellow hard hat or crash helmet. The police looked into a witness report of a youth who was seen talking to Helen Fleet and petting her dogs just two days before her murder. The witness report claimed it seemed like the youth assumed to be a young man knew Helen Fleet. Witnesses also spotted another two youths running out of the woods, around 30 minutes after the murder. One was aged 15 to 18, 5 feet 5 inches tall with dark trousers and a white ski jacket with red and blue trim. The other youth, seen separately, was aged about 16 and was also wearing a ski jacket with red and gray or dark blue squares. The murder weapon was never recovered but her clothing was sent for re-examination in hopes of finding DNA evidence. A photo fit was released of the mystery youth who was seen talking to her by a person in a van two days prior to her murder at 10 past 4 p.m. on Thursday the 26th of March 1987. Tonight's final reconstruction is from Avon and Somerset, from the seaside town of Western Supermare. In the summer season, Western is a hugely popular holiday resort, attracting families from throughout the British Isles. A large number of people have settled there to retire, and two months ago, a 66-year-old resident was attacked in a wood nearby and killed. It was a Saturday morning at the end of March, a time of year when local residents had the place largely to themselves. The bay and beach at Weston are spectacular. At the north end, the old town overlooks the sea. And above the houses is Walbury Hill. Once the site of an ancient fortress, it dominates the town. The dense woods here are a great attraction to walkers and explorers. Whether exercising dogs or riding horses, hundreds of people come here every day. It's Saturday, March the 28th. Down in Weston, number 38, Osborne Grove. It's nine o'clock in the morning, and Helen Fleet is preparing for the day. Windy weather seems to have turned around, but the London Weather Centre tell us that conditions will still be pretty miserable when the boat race starts in about three hours' time. Helen was 66 and enjoying her retirement in the house that she and her sister Betty had bought four years before. A new look at another cricket immortal, Dr. W.G. Grace, revealed in a new play called The Champion. But at six minutes past nine o'clock, let's go down to the river now. Helen came originally from the north of England. She lived in Crewe until she was 18, just before the war. Helen joined the ATS and trained as a lorry driver. She then transferred to the Women's Royal Air Force. She fell in love with a Spitfire pilot who was killed in action over Italy. After the war, she married, but it didn't last. She married again, but 20 years ago was widowed. She found fulfillment when she took up a successful career organizing trade exhibitions for an Oxfordshire engineering firm. 
In retirement, her greatest joy was her two small dogs. Don't be a minute, loves. Here we go, walkies. Be patient, good boys. Is there any activity on the river at the moment? Morning, Helen. Hello, dear. Both crews have been gone back to the Made some tea. Will you be ready right after breakfast? Yes. Well, I'll drop you off on the way up to the woods. Helen intended to go to Walbury Hill to walk the dogs, but her sister wanted to go shopping for a blouse. Helen promised to drop her off and then pick up some bread they needed. And I might just buy you a couple of those donuts you're so fond of. <laughs> Having dropped Betty off as planned, Helen got to the baker's in Milton Road at about 10.30. Hi, girls. Bye. Two loaves and two of those lovely donuts, please. To Eileen Fowler in the shop, Helen seemed her normal, cheery self. Jam ones? Yes, please. Eek. At 10.50, Helen was seen parking at Walbury Hill Road. She parked in her normal spot. Come on, here we go. Walkie pockets, walkie pockets. Come on, go, go, Cindy. Helen walked the dogs here twice a day, normally for over an hour. Come on, go, go. She suffered from emphysema, so she got tired quickly, but she still covered her usual route of about a mile. On a March morning, nearly everyone in the woods would be riding horses or, like Helen, walking dogs. But at around 11.30, these two girls noticed a young man in a ski jacket walking alone. Fifty minutes later, at about 20 past 12, Helen was nearing the end of her walk. About then, three separate witnesses heard a series of piercing screams. About the same time, below the woods, a boy almost fell over. He was running so fast down Prescott Close. 20 minutes later, a friend of Helen's, Sylvia Lewis, was starting her walk. As she let her dog off the lead, she saw Helen's two running free. Oh, hello, Cindy. Hello, Bill Bill. Hello. Come on, then. Where's Helen, then? Where's Helen? Show me where she is. Helen. Helen. Fifty yards away, a boy in an anorak was seen by a witness who was waiting for a bus to leave. Well, you have to wait until the you know, leaving time, which is about four minutes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's lying in the wood. I think she's been attacked. Right. Please, All could right. you come and help me? Helen had been beaten, she'd been stabbed and strangled. The investigating officer is Ray Sargentson. Not only a very, very violent attack on her, but apparently quite motiveless. That's right, a very vicious attack on a frail lady, totally unable to defend herself, who in addition to being stra stabbed, beaten about the body, was also strangled. Now, the great priority, obviously, is to find those young men in anorak ski jackets or, or wh whatever who were in the wood on that day, haven't yet been interviewed. Yes, indeed, yeah. It's Saturday the 28th of May. Obviously, all young people who are in that wood, anybody under the age of, what, 22, 23, should it, come forward. Yes, anybody in, in the wood. On the 28th of March, uh, who was in the wood during the times of between 10.45 and 12.30, should come forward. With a large number of people that we haven't yet traced who we know were in the woods during the time. I gather something like 70 people who were in the woods, you think, who haven't yet come forward. That's right. From other statements of other witnesses, they've told us that 
descriptions of persons walking dogs, we have not traced up to 70 people who are in the woods on the morning of the 28th of March. Right, and in fact, I know you're trace, trying to trace another young man and very badly needed him to come forward who was seen two days earlier on the Thursday. Yes, we traced a witness about the sixth week of the inquiry who spoke to the deceased two days before her death in Worldly Woods. He was asking the whereabouts of some of his workmen. He was driving a van? He was driving a van, and Mrs... Fleet was stood there and nearby was a youth and this is the only sight and we've ever got of the deceased with a single youth. She basically only spoke to other persons walking dogs. Right, this is about ten past four on Thursday 26th of March. Yes, that's right. Now, obviously somebody may have suspicions about somebody. Um, you've got a photo, a video fit actually, a computer enhanced uh, video fit of that youngster who was seen two days before. We don't know that that guy has anything to do with the crime. You just want to eliminate him, yeah? Yes, certainly do. He's a very important witness. He's been seen speaking to the deceased, and we clearly do want to eliminate him from the inquiry. Somebody, of course, may be shielding someone. They may have suspicions about someone who acted oddly. Yes, the viciousness of the murder leads us to believe that somebody will be acting in an irrational or unusual manner. And we plead to anybody who knows any person, whether in their family or not, to come forward and supply us with the information. All right. Incidentally, I might say that when we did that reconstruction, you heard all those screams. Nobody rang the police and nobody came to investigate. Let me also say, incidentally, the two dogs have been found a good home. Don't ring us about that. But if you have any suspicions about who might have done this thing, terribly important you act quickly. Please do call us. You can speak to a BBC researcher if you prefer. The number, of course, 01811 8055. A retired police officer, former Norfolk Constabulary Constable Chris Clark, believed that two other murders which occurred in similar circumstances to the murder of Helen Fleet are connected to the same killer. The two other cases were the murder of 14-year-old Kate Bushell which occurred in Exwick in Exeter, Devon on Saturday, November 15, 1997 and the murder of 41-year-old mother of two Lynn Bryant which occurred in the Roseland Peninsula in Cornwall on Tuesday, 20 October 1998. Next tonight, a retired police officer believes the murders of three women here in the West Country could have been carried out by one person. Chris Clark has written a book looking into the deaths of Helen Fleet, Kate Bushell and Lynn Bryant. Ellie Barker has been looking back at the cases. Three different victims stabbed to death while out walking dogs. Their killer has never been found. Helen Fleet was attacked in Welbury Woods in Western Supermare in March 1987. Well, one is only four months old, which is a long time, but certainly we are continuing, and I'm very hopeful that at the end of the day we should find the person responsible. But nearly 30 years on and the killer has not been found. Ten years later, in November 1997, 14-year-old Kate Bushell was stabbed while exercising a neighbour's Jack Russell. Her body was discovered by her father just a few hundred yards away from her family's home in Exwick in Devon. Neither the killer or weapon have ever been found. This is despite appeals made years later by her family and friends. In that brutal attack, I lost a loving daughter and a good friend with whom I shared everyday moments. I can still see Kate with her long flowing fair hair, her cheerful face and caring nature. I remember her big heart and miss her cuddles. I just miss her being here. It's just her sort of, you, wherever you were, you could always see Kate because she was so tall and walking mm. down the corridor. And or you'd just, hear her. Or you'd hear her, yeah. <laughs> it's just her smiling face, isn't it, really? You know, you always see her sort of mm. grinning. She was always, and... Yeah, she was always so happy. Yeah. I don't think she ever... She ever had a bad day? No. Or got miserable, or had an argument, or... She just... Oh, my memories of her, that she was always happy. Less than a year later, in 1998, Lynn Bryant was attacked while walking her dog near her home in Truro. The 41-year-old grandmother was stabbed in the neck, chest and back. Although ten years have passed, Lynn is still in our thoughts every day. It is particularly sad when we think about her not having the pleasure of seeing her three grandchildren growing up. So all these years on, the question still remains. Who did murder these women? And could they have been killed by the same person? Ellie Barker, ITV News. Well, earlier I spoke to Chris Clark, who's written a book on those three murders, and I asked him what motivated him to research the cases. My wife was nearly abducted as a teenager in 1971. 
as a result of that I uh, progressed to uh, further crimes committed which I believe were committed by Peter Sutcliffe and then expanded to the three uh, West Country cases of Helen Fleet, Kate Bushell and Lynn Bryant and to me there were distinct similarities in all three crimes. They were females in isolated spots in uh, rural areas of Somerset, Devon and Cornwall. There appeared to be no uh, motive of a sexual or robbery nature on any of them. That was author Chris Clark speaking to me a little earlier. Helen Fleet was murdered in an apparent motiveless attack on March 28, 1987. 35 years have passed since Helen Fleet's death and in 2017 the Avon and Somerset Constabulary renewed an appeal for any information on her murder and they believe the answer still lies in Weston Supermare.